This morning, weather alert, scorching heat in Sydney and torrential rain in Melbourne, a tale of two cities as our summer takes yet another unpredictable turn. Sports fraud scandal, the Prime Minister orders an investigation into former Sports Minister Bridget McKenzie to determine if she breached ministerial standards. And Royal Rift deepens. Meghan's estranged father, Thomas Markle, sits down to a tell-all interview, coming clean on what really happened during the lead-up to the royal wedding. Live from our Sydney headquarters, this is 7 News. Good morning. A severe fire danger warning is in place for parts of New South Wales today, with temperatures forecast to reach the high 40s for parts of the state. Sydney is predicted to hit a high of 40 degrees in the city, with a chance of a thunderstorm in the afternoon. The Rural Fire Service will be on high alert, with strong westerly winds to hit at midday. A weak southerly change is expected to come through tomorrow morning. And Melbourne has been hammered overnight by a downpour of heavy rain and it's still coming down as we go to air. Flood warnings are in place for the Yarra, Werribee and West Gippsland regions. Parts of Victoria have also been issued with a severe weather warning for damaging winds. Winds of up to 100 kilometres an hour are forecast for people in parts of the Central West and South Gippsland districts. A fire south of Canberra Airport has been downgraded to advice level after it threatened lives and properties yesterday. Six helicopters were used to waterbomb the flames before crews managed to control it. The cause of the fire is not yet clear. Fire crews are warning residents to remain vigilant and listen to advice today when a total fire ban will be in place. Bridget McKenzie is set to face a high-profile investigation into her conduct regarding the sports fraud scandal. Political reporter Olivia Leeming is in Canberra. Olivia, good morning to you. The investigation was ordered by the Prime Minister. Yes, yeah, Scott Morrison has asked the head of his department of Prime Minister and Cabinet, the nation's top bureaucrat, to look into this to see whether Bridget McKenzie has breached the ministerial code. This was after it emerged she approved a $36,000 grant to her own gun club in Victoria without publicly disclosing that she was a member. This was part of a much larger $100 million program she's been under a great deal of scrutiny for after the Auditor General found that she She targeted funding to local sporting clubs in marginal seats in the lead up to the election. The Attorney General also now looking at the legality of that process, whether it was in the guidelines for her to approve those grants against the advice of Sports Australia. Senior coalition figures increasingly unsure whether she can survive this scandal. Some of her Nationals colleagues as well privately discussing whether she should stand down to save the government further embarrassment. The Prime Minister now awaiting the findings of that review. His office says he will follow due process, but Labor insists he has no choice but to ask her to stand down. Thanks, Olivia. He was once among the most powerful men in Hollywood. Now Harvey Weinstein has shuffled into a New York courtroom to face the first day of his trial. He stands accused of abusing that same power to prey on young women throughout his career. Let's go live now to US correspondent Paul Kadak at the Manhattan Criminal Courts building in New York. Paul, good morning. So what's happened so far? Good morning, Monique. Well, the prosecution has started outlining its case against the disgraced movie mogul Harvey Weinstein, saying that at the same time he was walking red carpets around the world, he was also a vicious sexual predator. Prosecutor Megan Hass taking the jury and a packed courtroom step by step through some pretty stark detail of the alleged sexual assaults he's, uh, he's said to have committed, including on Sopranos star Annabella Siora back in the mid-90s, and also the rape and sexual assault of the two New York women who've pressed charges in this trial. She went through how he preyed on each woman by first offering opportunities to work with him. The defendant knew he was preying on the naive and inexperienced. She said these young women were pawns. She said that during the trial, when they give evidence, they'll describe to the jury their fear, their shame and their humiliation that they each wrestled with following the violent encounters with the defendant, each feeling small and insignificant, no match for the power broker of Hollywood. Harvey Weinstein sat in silence during all this, shaking his head at times 
evidence. The 67-year-old has pleaded not guilty to the charges. His defence team claims that the sexual encounters were consensual. They've indicated that they have dozens of emails between the accusers and Harvey Weinstein. They say will bear this out, including ones described as being loving. Now, around 700 New Yorkers were screened before they picked the 12 members of the jury and the three reserves. We'll now hear all of the evidence against him and decide his fate on the mysterious charge of predatory sexual assault he could face up to life in prison. Monique. All right, Paul, thank you. Well, cancer con woman Belle Gibson has had her home raided in a bid to recoup more than half a million dollars of outstanding fines. Gibson made hundreds of thousands of dollars from a social media empire after claiming alternative therapies and nutrition cured her brain cancer. It was later revealed she never had the disease. Consumer Affairs says that they will not stop until they get all the money that she owes. A direct flight from the Chinese city of Wuhan is due to arrive in Sydney today with added biosecurity measures in place to stop the spread of a deadly new virus. Coronavirus has claimed at least nine lives in China with more than 400 cases in six countries, the first in the US confirmed in Seattle. A Brisbane man who travelled to Wuhan where the virus first took hold was suspected of bringing the bug back to Australia but has since been cleared. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex are bracing for further turmoil as they struggle to smoothly transition into their new life in Canada. A tell-all documentary with Meghan's estranged father is about to go to air. In a bombshell interview, Thomas Markle said that he wants to apologise to the Queen and clear his name. I, I, want, I apologize to you. I want to apologise to the Queen and to the royal family. I want to do that and I was told by them, don't. For more now, we're joined live by reporters Sarah Greenodge, who is in London, and Amelia Brace on Vancouver Island in Canada, where the Sussexes are now staying. Morning to you both. Sarah, first to you. All eyes are on this tell-all interview. Do we know what it will contain? Good morning, Mon. Well, it's certainly set to be very interesting. Thomas Markle rather says he agreed to do this documentary because he's sick of the way he's been misrepresented in the media. He says trashy things have been said about him which simply are not true. The last time that he spoke to Meghan and Prince Harry was around May 2018, just before their wedding. He says he desperately wanted to walk his daughter down the aisle, but then he suffered that massive heart attack and when he asked his doctor if he could fly to the UK the next day, the doctor laughed in his face. He goes on to describe how he found out that Meghan was pregnant and expecting his grandchild when he heard it on the radio. You tell people, you know, you, well, you heard it on the radio. This is my daughter talking about my grandchild. She's going to have a grandchild this morning. And I'm not hearing about it on the phone. I'm hearing about it on the radio. The former Hollywood lighting director believes that Harry and Meghan aren't too keen to see him at the moment. He says the next time the couple will probably see him is, quote, when I'm being lowered into the ground. This interview was shot over six days in October last year, a bit before the Sussexes announced their plan to step down, but it goes to air in a couple of hours. All right, thank you, Sarah. And now to you, Amelia. Now, Meghan's come under fire this morning for a new Instagram post. What's that? Yeah, not so much about the content of the post, Mon, but more about the timing. Meghan surprised her fans this morning by posting some never-before-seen photos of work she was doing at an animal shelter in the UK a few weeks ago. Of course, that was before she fled that country to come here to Canada and stepped back from royal duties. But the issue for royal watchers is that she posted that just shortly after the Duchess of Cambridge, Kate Middleton, put up her own post promoting her new initiative to help children under five in the UK. Now, people have suggested that Meghan is trying to steal her sister-in-law's thunder, but perhaps the biggest blow is that with this post, the Sussexes have now officially taken over the Cambridges on Instagram in terms of followers, so that royal rivalry is certainly continuing, Mon. All right, thank you both. Talk to you throughout the morning. Well, Prince Charles was all smiles as he met teen activist Greta Thunberg, paying tribute to her passion for climate change action. The pair was introduced after the prince delivered a speech at the World Economic Forum in Davos, where he called for a paradigm shift, describing Greta as remarkable. As I said, I didn't want my grandchildren uh, to accuse me of not doing something about this in time. And of course, there they are. 
all her generation, almost my grandchildren, if you know what I mean, all, all, all desperate because not nearly enough has happened. We've left it so late. What vision do you see for the likes of Prince George if something isn't done now? Well, I mean, it's not very encouraging, is it, if you look at what's happening at the moment. I mean, we can't go on like this with you know, every month another record in temperatures being broken when, you know, warmer and warmer and warmer. Last year was the hottest ever. Prince Charles says his children and grandchildren pay a constant role in his environmental campaigning. Three of Sydney's oldest Big W stores will shut their doors next Friday, the first to close under a major downsizing of one of our biggest retail chains. The stores at Auburn, Chalora and Fairfield are the first of 30 to close nationwide and have now launched giant sales to clear stock. At Big W, they say every day's a big day. But at the Auburn outlet, it's nothing but D-Day. I think it's a bloody shame. I have to go to Parramatta now to do my shopping. Fairfield and Chalora are the sorry same. Cards and paper has all wrapped up. DIY looks a certain disaster. And the bookshelves tell a sad story too. There's a clearance to end all, where it's half price or less. You're worth $2.50. Coles will replace Big W at Chalora. Aldi will move in at Auburn with a car lot at Fairfield. 30 years I've been in Auburn and Big W has been a part of my life. The closures blow a hole in the chain's southwest footprint, creating a Bermuda Triangle of trade. But far from a mystery, could this map solve the riddle of which stores shut next? Those closing are all in mid-sized centres, dwarfed by bigger ones nearby. And it's likely that a smaller store is going to be unprofitable, then that's the store you're going to close. Rockdale, Ride and Winston Hills are all near bigger centres with big W's as well. The chain's tip to reveal more of its hit list as soon as next month, as it talks to more managers about exiting leases. From Big W, the new promise to you, a minimum three months notice if your store's next. Helen Wellings, 7 News. We have some sad news this morning. Monty Python star Terry Jones has died after a long battle with dementia. The Welsh actor is being remembered as a titan of British comedy, most notably for creating and starring in the acclaimed Monty Python films. <laughs> Family, friends and colleagues have expressed their sorrow, remembering him as a funny and loving man. He was 77. Coming up in Seven's early news, dramatic pictures see the moment an airline cabin filled with smoke on the way to one of the world's busiest tourist destinations. And why your sunscreen could be slowly poisoning you. The bombshell investigation is just ahead. A Ryanair flight has had to make an emergency landing after the cabin suddenly filled with smoke. The Bucharest to London flight carrying 169 people was forced to turn back shortly after takeoff. Passengers took to social media to upload videos of the dramatic event, with some complaining that staff did little to calm the situation. Locals near the Tal volcano in the Philippines have been warned an eruption could take place within hours. The volcano has continued to emit smoke as officials prepare for a second mass evacuation. Plumes of smoke can still be seen billowing from the crater following almost 10 days of activity that's seen thousands of villagers displaced. Authorities say they are now bracing for a crisis. Four people have died as a massive storm batters popular tourist destinations in eastern Spain. Storm Gloria has been hammering Spain since the weekend with high winds, heavy rain and large dumps of snow. Power has been knocked out to over 200,000 homes and businesses. Some coastal regions have reported waves over eight metres high and several towns have been flooded. And checking finance news now, the Dow Jones and the Nasdaq have traded higher. In London, the FT100 lost 39 points and Germany's DAX traded lower. Closer to home, Japan's Nikkei also traded up. Hong Kong's Hang Seng added over 350 points. The All Lords and the ASX200 also traded higher. On the commodities market, gold is trading at 1,556 US dollars an ounce. Oil is at 58 US dollars a barrel. The Aussie dollar is buying 68 US cents, 75 
$1.05 Japanese yen and $1.05 New Zealand. New research has heightened concerns that chemicals found in common sunscreens could be toxic. The US study claims the findings are cause for alarm, but the Australian Cancer Council is not convinced. The soundtrack to an Australian summer. Now new research claims the sunscreen we slop on could be harmful. If it's not really good for you, then... What's the point in putting it on? The US government study claims a number of chemicals commonly found in sunscreen can be absorbed directly into the bloodstream at levels that exceed safety thresholds. If I knew that chemicals were going straight to the bloodstream, out. Chemicals like homozolate and octocrylene, which can be found in Banana Boat Daily Protect SPF 50, Nivea Sensitive Protect SPF 50 and the Cancer Council's Everyday SPF 30. Only 48 people took part in the study in conditions the Cancer Council says doesn't reflect everyday use. The authors themselves say that we should keep using sunscreen, so there's no need for concern. New UV-detecting wristbands are helping the safety message. When the bracelet turns purple, it's a sign to get out of the sun. We've really hit the spot. It's a modern day mood ring for sun safety. It might not just be young Australians who need a reminder about sun safety. A recent survey found 40% of adults who became sunburnt either forgot protection or thought they didn't need it. We would recommend using clothing, hats, shade and sunglasses as well as sunscreen. More Aussies keeping sun smart. Dante check on 7 News. Next on Seven's Early News, the ladder leaders fall once again to a Big Bash Championship challenger and the big guns fire once again on day three of the Australian Open. It was a straightforward third night for the big names at the Australian Open. Despite some uncharacteristic errors, Serena Williams was rarely troubled in her straight sets win over the world number 70, Tamara Zdanzek. And Roger Federer pulled out all the moves, beating Philippe Krajovic in three sets. But the 20-time Grand Slam winner was understanding that he may have been disadvantaged by his opponent's five-set match the day before. Yeah, I do feel a little bit sorry like this, actually, to be honest, but that, you've got to take advantage of it. I don't know. He'll play John Millman in the third round after the Aussie beat the 31st seed, Hubert Hercatch. And Jordan Thompson was thoroughly frustrated in an epic four-hour five-set loss to Fabio Fanini. The Melbourne Stars' stranglehold on the Big Bash looked shaky after dropping their second game in a row against the Adelaide Strikers. Glenn Maxwell was playing with a heavy heart following the passing of a friend and paid tribute after taking the wicket of Phil Salt. The Strikers finished their innings on four for 162 with the ball Peter Siddle was on fire, taking four for 33. The ladder leaders never really got going, eventually falling 11 runs short. You can't read too much into it going forward because it is a fickle game and you can go out there and, and win games from any position. The strikers move up to second on the ladder. Now, the strikers' win gives the Big Bash a clear top three teams with only two weeks left in the regular season. The top five teams will go through to the finals. And tonight, Steve Smith and Marnus Labuschagne return as the Brisbane Heat play the Sydney Sixers live and free right across the screens of seven. The Oli Roos are down to their last chance to qualify for the Tokyo 2020 Olympics after losing to South Korea 2-0 in the AFC under the 23 Championship semi-final. The Aussies were outclassed by the Koreans and now need a win against Uzbekistan in the third place playoff to qualify for the Olympics. And former Johnny Warren medalist Marco Rojas has officially made his return to Melbourne victory for a third stint a two-and-a-half-year deal. Marjack Dorr is in line for a remarkable return to AFL football after returning to full training at the North Melbourne Kangaroos. Yeah, well, it's looking good. It's good to have him out there. He, he did a fair bit pre Chrissy, and he'll continue that build-up along with the rest of us over the next sort of four to six weeks. The 28-year-old survived a life-threatening fall off Melbourne's Balti Bridge in late 2018 and missed all of last season. 
Well, it's a 131 kilometre ride from Adelaide city centre to the hills in today's stage three of the tour down under. Yesterday, the toll of the bushfires within, was in full view in the second stage. After a series of minor incidents, a huge pileup took out a chunk of the peloton with just over a kilometre to go. Caleb Ewan backed up his classic victory with a stage win, also moving into the overall lead. And you can watch the third stage right here today on Seven. Next on Seven's Early News, a closer look at how the weather is shaping up in your part of the country. Taking a look at the weather around the country now, and a monsoon trough is triggering thunderstorms over the northern tropics. A trough and cold front crossing South Australia, western New South Wales, Victoria and Tasmania is causing strong winds, rain and a few thunderstorms. Around the capitals, Brisbane, a possible shower and 33. Sydney, mostly sunny and 41. Canberra, possible shower, 33. Melbourne, some rain clearing and 21. Hobart, showers and 20. Adelaide, clearing shower for you, 21. In Perth, increasing sunshine, 